Now, alchemy also shows us and can teach us a lot about transactions and about things that are going on behind the scenes, including a concept called the mempool. To help us understand a little bit more about those transactions that we just sent and how to work with Alchemy to see more about our transactions, we have Albert from the Alchemy team to give us a little demonstration. Hello, Albert here from Alchemy. I'm at that guy in tech on Twitter. Um, feel free to follow if you want to engage and ask any questions about this section of the video. But super excited to join Patrick here to explain a little bit of what goes on behind the scenes when you are using Alchemy to submit a transaction. And we have a ton of tools to actually provide a window of visibility into what's going on so that you can actually debug in case there are usage errors on your website uh, or there are pending transactions that are stuck. Whatever it is, we provide that window into the data that you control. Remember that all the transactions that you submit are recorded on the blockchain. They're not controlled by Alchemy. They're not controlled by any other service provider. Um, we are just a window. We're just the plumbing, the piping uh, to be useful to you. So let me show you exactly what that means. Right now, I have a bunch of applications in my dashboard. You can see here that there are different projects that I've used over time. Um, this one is the most recently active, and it is the one that I have currently set up to connect to my MetaMask. So I actually use a custom RPC provider here. And let me make my face a little smaller. Uh, and you can see here I've misspelled RinkB, but this right now my, my network is actually connected to the RinkB test network via Alchemy. So uh, this is actually this application. So if I click into here in the dashboard, you can see here a bunch of really interesting statistics. This is the first thing that you'll probably use if you're trying to understand more about your application. You'll go here and you can see how many compute units per second your application is currently using. And this is kind of great for specifically Alchemy usage understanding. Um, but then this is also really useful to see like what's the median response time. And so 33 milliseconds is pretty good. Uh, if that starts to increase, then you might want to figure out, you know, what's going on here. Success rate it has been kind of low, so that is a, a, a clue for me to click on this tab to view recent invalid requests, and that I can actually see, oh, there's a bunch of um, uh, failed transactions where the transaction has already been sent or the nonce is too low or whatever it is, I can actually use this tab to debug. So that success rate is pretty useful. Throughput, that's been limited. Uh, so if you are sending too many requests or your website is getting spammed, you might start getting some requests blocked. So that's uh, what's useful to view there. Concurrent requests over here, success rate in the past 24 hours versus the past one hour. Uh, the total number of requests in the last 24 hours, and this is different than compute units because each request can have a different level of computing cost. And computing cost is measured by compute units. Total requests is just the actual number of absolute requests. And then of course, the number of invalid requests. Cool, so uh, one thing I do wanna show you that's interesting is when I do submit a transaction, and I actually have one right here that I wanna send, so let's transfer between my accounts. And I'm just going to send a tiny amount of rink B ETH, but I'm going to purposefully edit my gas fees to be super, super low so that the uh, node will actually not send the transaction to be mined or there are no miners that will actually pick it up. So you can see here, I've divided the, the priority fee and the max fee by a ton. So it's super low. And if I confirm that in the Matamax UI, you'll see that the transaction has been pending for a bit. And we'll go over to this mempool tab. This is another really useful visualization. And what the mempool is, is a kind of a holding ground. I like to think of it as the waiting room of a restaurant um, where if you're a transaction and you're waiting to get mined, uh, the mempool is kind of like the waiting room where you're waiting to get seated. So uh, there are different statuses for your, each of your transactions. The ones that you always want to see are the mined transactions because that says that your transaction is successful and it's now part of the blockchain. Now the mempool, uh, every node has its own you know, holding ground. So I can actually show you this quick visualization. Remember blockchains are run by a network of nodes and uh, each node or each computer that's running the Ethereum software maintains a copy of the blockchain. And uh, as a developer, you have to use these nodes to make requests to the blockchain. You now you can use Alchemy, you can use another RPC provider, you can spin up your own node if you want to, but regardless, you need to use a node to communicate with the chain. Now each node, uh, beyond having a copy of the entire blockchain state, it also has a local memory of uh, transaction and that's called mempool. So if there are pending transactions that are waiting to be mined, you can consider them as being in the mempool. Now that's what we're looking at right here. If we click on 
uh, the app that I am currently using for my MetaMask RPC. Then you can see here that um, there are, oh, this is not the right one. Uh, this one is the right one for RinkB. All, uh, for all the transactions here, you can see some were drop in place, some were mined, and there's one that's pending. And this pending one actually matches up with the one that is pending here. It's being sent to 0xCBB. And if we click on this transaction hash, you get all the information that you need to debug. So you can see here that it's from my current address, uh, 0xF5F, and then it's to 0xCBB. And here's the value that I'm trying to send. Here's the gas fee that I'm, I've attached to this transaction. And you'll notice that that is super low, even for the Rinkby test network. So knowing this and seeing, wow, this transaction has been pending for one minute and 46 seconds. It was sent at this time. I should probably fix that. Um, and so over here, you can actually use the MetaMask RPC, uh, the MetaMask API um, and speed it up. And then I'm just gonna use the auto high speed up to update the gas fees. And then if we go back to our dashboard, back to our application, you can see that there are some new recent invalid requests. And this is because uh, we've resubmitted a transaction. And then in the re recent requests, we have, uh, let's refresh that real quick. You can see that we are uh, sending a raw transaction. This one's already known. And there's another one before, but that's resulting in a get transaction receipt that is successful. And then if we go back to the mempool, you can see, boom, no more pending transactions, only dropped and replaced and mined. So this transaction nonce number five is now successful and you're on your way to developing and maintaining the rest of your application. So yeah, thanks. Hope that was useful. Let me know if you have any questions. Oh,